بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Indeed all praise is due to Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala as he deserves to be praised We can never praise him as he truly deserves We believe in him and we rely on him and we refer all our affairs to him and we testify that there is no God except Allah who alone without any partners, our creator and maker, sustainer and provider, the all merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. At tawab the one who accepts repentance, the one who loves the repentance of his servants. Al Ghafurul Afu, the forgiving and the one who pardons. The one who loves to forgive his servants. His mercy precedes his anger, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described the mercy of Allah when he saw a woman looking for her child in them during the time or during the aftermath of a battle. And he saw when this woman found her child, how she hugged her child and how she cherished her child. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah is more compassionate to his servant than this mother is toward her child. And so we thank him and we praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of his blessings upon us, that which we realize and the many that we don't realize. And we, send, and we testify that there is no true, that the Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is the seal of the prophets, the final messenger. And that he, alayhi salatu was salam, was the example of what it means to be devoted to Allah. He, alayhi salatu was salam, would pray to his Lord until his feet would become swollen from standing in prayer. Something that Many of us feel during the months of Ramadan the pain of standing for an extended amount of time. But very few of us stand until their feet are swollen. Our messenger, alayhi salatu was salam, he would stand so long in prayer while he was forgiven for all his sins. He had no concern of punishment or sin. And so when he was questioned, by Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Why do you do this when all of your past and future sins have been forgiven? He says, alayhi salatu was salam, should I not be a grateful servant? And so his worship was one of gratitude. He realized the greatness and the vastness of Allah's rahmah and the incapability of us to truly be grateful to Allah in a manner that he deserves subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he would exhaust himself alayhi salatu was salam in the worship of his Lord and not because it was a burden but it was his comfort. He says alayhi salatu was salam وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ And the pleasure of my eyes has been made in prayer. And when it would be time to pray the jama'ah prayer in the masjid, he would say to Bilal radiallahu an, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Bilal, grant us comfort with this prayer. And so may abundant peace and blessings be upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, and those who follow in their path after them and us with them. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Dear brothers and sisters, I remind myself and yourselves to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be God-fearing and God-conscious in all of your circumstances at all times. Indeed, Allah is ever watchful of every one of us. There is nothing we hide, nothing we do that can hide from Him. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنِ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ He knows the slight gaze, the, the slight stare or look at haram that no one might catch.
he subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that brief moment that might pass by and we don't even notice it. And he keeps record of that subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he knows what we conceal in our hearts. Thoughts that no one else shares with us. That no creature can know. He subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. And so if this is the case of our Lord, and he is watchful over us and aware of what we do, then it is only reasonable to fear him and to be mindful of him and to act in a manner that reflects that consciousness. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us taqwa. Alhamdulillah, we have entered the last 10 nights or we are entering the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Our Messenger alayhi salatu was salam in the first night of Ramadan, he gave a short sermon to the companions. He mentioned the many virtues of Ramadan alayhi salatu was salam in the first night of Ramadan. And in that speech that he delivered, he said alayhi salatu was salam, fihi laylatun khayrun min alfi shahr. In this month is a night better than a thousand months. فَمَنْ حُرِمَ خَيْرُهَا فَقَدْ حُرِمْ The one who is deprived of its good is truly deprived. And so this hadith of the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam, it, it teaches us many things. Among them, the great virtue of Laylatul Qadr. It also teaches us that the focus and the attention that Rasulullah gave to this single night, that he mentions it on the first night of Ramadan. Laylatul Qadr is the gem and jewel of Ramadan. It is the secret of Ramadan. It is the reason why Ramadan is so virtuous. It's because of Laylatul Qadr. And so he, alayhi salatu was salam, is bringing the attention of his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, to the great virtue of this night. And he, gives, and he makes this statement to them that should shake every believer at his core. To be deprived of Laylat al-Qadr is to be miserable, is to truly be deprived of any good. Only a person who has no good in them would be deprived of this night. It also shows us how abundant the mercy of Laylat al-Qadr is. Meaning it is a night, it is an opportunity for anyone and that anyone can attain if they just devote themselves a little bit. And so the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained in the hadith how one attains the virtue of this night. And so he said alayhi salatu wa salam, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدَرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever stands in the night of Laylat al-Qadr with faith and sincerely seeking the reward of Allah, all of his past sins are forgiven. So three requirements. That one devotes themselves in some way they stand in prayer. The second... They have conviction and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their Lord, that He is their only true God and Creator. And second, and third, their standing in prayer is for the sole purpose of Allah's pleasure and Allah's reward. They don't want the attention of others, they don't want the praise of others, they don't want others to know what they're doing. They want to be secluded. It isn't a social gathering. It isn't a thing that you share with other people. It's an intimate worship between a servant and his Lord. And so if a person has these three qualities, the Prophet ﷺ, he grants them the glad tidings of having all their past sins forgiven. And so may Allah grant us this layla, this night, this blessed night, Allow us to stand in it and be among those who stand in it with faith and sincerely seeking his reward. This night has many virtues. And among its great virtues 
is that our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an entire chapter of the Qur'an to be recited until the day of Qiyamah. And that in itself speaks about the magnitude of this night and its great status with Allah Ta'ala that He dedicates an entire chapter of the Qur'an to be recited until Yawm al Qiyamah. One single night of among 360 nights in a year. It is less than 1% of the year. But an entire surah for this night. To show that it isn't about the time. The time is short. But the rahmah of Allah in this night and the blessings that He bestows in this night are so great that they surpass the value of a thousand months. One night, what Allah bestows in it, surpasses the blessings He bestows in a thousand regular months. Better, Allah didn't give a number. The number a thousand is used to capture our attention and to make us understand we cannot fathom the greatness of this night. But if you want a number, know that it is better than a thousand months. Better than 83 years and four months. One single night. That is more than the average lifespan of a human being. And this is a rahmah from Allah that He has given to this ummah. Our Rasul, this, our Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, He's been given many khasais, many unique traits and qualities not shared with him by any of the previous prophets and messengers, and his nation has been given many qualities not shared by any of the previous nations as well. And among them is the reservation of Laylat al-Qadr for this ummah. It was not disclosed to the nations before. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disclosed it to our messenger alayhi salatu wa salam as an honor for him to elevate his status and by that Allah elevates the status of this nation. The nation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And by this single night, a person is able to extend their lifespan. Our lifespan is short, 60 some years on average. A third of it we spend sleeping, a third of it we spend working. What we actually accomplish in life is very little. But Allah gives us an opportunity to earn His treasures of the Akhirah, to earn the Jannah, to earn gardens that are more vast than the heavens and the earth, kingdom that is beyond one's sight, Rewards that is beyond the imagination of any mind and the, the image of any pleasure or the, and the thought of any person. Allah gives us an opportunity to earn such great rewards in moments like these. Allah extends our lifespan. He gives us the opportunity to do a more than a thousand months of worship in a single night. It isn't because we deserve it. But it is because how generous our Lord is. He wants to bestow His rewards on His servants. He does not want to deprive them. And He wants to give them the best of His rewards. And so He subhanahu wa ta'ala from His generosity, He has bestowed this great blessing upon our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and upon this ummah. The night of Laylat al-Qadr. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدَرِ Indeed, we have revealed it, the meaning the Qur'an in Laylat al-Qadr. وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدَرِ And what will make you truly know what is Laylat al-Qadr? Laylat al-Qadr خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهَرٍ It is better than a thousand months. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِّنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ the malaika descend in it, as well as the spirit, referring to Jibreel alayhi salam. And they descend with all the divine commands of predestiny for that year. 
And so the affairs that will occur for that year, the malaika descend. As we know, the malaika, they are the ones, the angels are the ones who are the, the, the means by which Allah sustains the affairs of his creation. And so the affairs of life and death and rain and agriculture, birth and, and, and provisions and health and, and so on, all of these matters are managed by angels in a, in a world we don't see. And so these angels, they descend in countless numbers. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, they're as abundant as the pebbles are in, in a desert. Their numbers cannot be counted. They are descending. Why? Because of the abundance of Allah's Rahmah and because of the planning of the year to come for Allah's creation. And then Allah says, Salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr. It is peace until the sun, the, the, the break of dawn. In another surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al dukhan also referring to this night, Hamim wal kitab al mubin, inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubarakah, inna kunna mundirin, fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim, amram min indina, inna kunna mursilin, rahmatan min rabbik, inna hu huwa sami'u al alim. Hamim, by the clear book, we have revealed it in a blessed night. Indeed, we have always warned our creation. Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. Every wise matter is ordained in it. Inna kunna mursilin, and we have always sent messengers. Rahmatan min rabbik, a mercy from your Lord. Inna hu huwa sami'u alim. He is all knowing and all hearing. Subhanahu wa taala. And so, all of these verses. And statements of our Messenger والسلام, show us the great virtue of this night. It is the greatest night of the entire year. But this night is concealed from us. We don't know exactly when it is. And from the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, our scholars conclude that it moves. It isn't a set day of the year at a fixed time, but that it actually moves every year within the month of Ramadan and within the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And so, and that is the primary and predominant opinion of our scholars that it's within the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And so, and there are explicit ahadith, of course, to indicate that. And so because this night moves, our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa devoted himself in worship during the entire 10 days, the last 10 days of Ramadan. We ask Allah to grant us Laylat al-Qadr and to make us among those who stand in it with Iman and Ihtisab. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu ma sami'atum wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم وأتبعوا السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق وخالق الناس بخلق حسن. In these last few moments, I would like to discuss. The example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the last 10 nights of Ramadan so that we may strive <coughs> so that we may strive to follow in his path and so that we may devote ourselves in a manner that is close or in a, and make, so that we make an attempt to follow the example of our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. What was his example? Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she narrates that the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam kana yajtahidu fil ashra al-awakhiri ma la yajtahidu fi ghayri. He would strive in the last days, in the last ten nights, in a way that he would not strive any other time. So that's the first quality. It's to push oneself Further than we have pushed ourselves in ibadah, in recitation, in prayer, than we have any other time of the year, than we have the beginning of Ramadan. In another hadith, Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says, كَانَ إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَشْرُ الْأَوَاخِرُ أَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ 
he commanded his family to stand up at night. She said that he would tighten his mi'zar, his izar, referring to the discipline and the hard work of the Messenger والسلام, and he would command his family to stand in prayer the entire night. The entire night. This is his family He would command his entire household, anybody who had the physical capability to do so, to pray the entire night and he would, and he would, re, and he would be in worship his entire night. He would devote himself والسلام, during the whole night. And so during this night, this, these days of Ramadan, one should first devote themselves in worship as best as they can while balancing the responsibilities they have, but also pushing themselves a bit more than they have the other times of the year, than they have the beginning of Ramadan. And this doesn't mean we neglect our obligations. The Messenger والسلام, he planned ahead. He planned ahead. He made sure to stop all communal activities, social activities, with work and, and, and community matters, and devote himself in worship. Many of us, we, st we don't have that flexibility or that, 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 that uh, uh, advantage, but whatever we have, we should take advantage of it. If it's the weekends, if it's the nights, if we can stand up for half an hour, an hour, whatever we can, push ourselves a little bit more than we usually push ourselves. And the second is to encourage our families to do likewise. And again, with wisdom and balance, push as, as much as you can without, of course, overwhelming or causing harm or pain or causing failure in other, uh, with regards to other obligations. Another quality of our Messenger والسلام, during these last 10 nights, Sayyidina Aisha ta'ala an, anha asked him, Ya Rasulullah, if I was to find the night of Laylatul Qadr, what shall I do? What shall I say? He said, Oh Aisha, say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you love to forgive. You are the forgiving and you love to forgive. Forgive me. So it is the night to seek forgiveness. And that was the explicit teaching to our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And so during the last 10 nights, a believer should devote themselves in dua. Make abundant dua. And especially make dua in sujood. We know that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَقْرَمُ بَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ فِي السُّجُودِ The nearest a servant is to his Lord is in sujood. Allah said in the end of Surah Iqra, وَسْجُدْ وَاقْتَرِبْ Right before, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ So the month of Ramadan, the, late, the last 10 nights of Ramadan and the night of Laylat al-Qadr is a time of abundant sujood and abundant dua seeking the forgiveness of Allah, and seeking good, pre, pre, good destiny for oneself. And seeking the blessings of Allah in one's affairs. Seeking the Jannah of Allah and protection from hell. And so it is a month of dua. It is a, it is a, there are days, nights of dua, and nights of sujood. Also, we see from the example of Rasulullah that he made the i'tikaf. He secluded himself in the masjid, and not just in the masjid, in a tent of his own, where he would not encounter anyone else. He would only come out to lead the salah, and he would come out to take care of his personal needs, and then he would return and devote himself in his private space. And so we see from the example of the Prophet ﷺ that devotion doesn't mean socializing. When one comes to the masjid, they devote themselves and they try as best as they can because it is often difficult when one encounters a friend or a family member to just be silent and not say anything. But one tries to find moments of privacy to devote themselves in worship and to recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is also one of the habits and practices of our Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Another habit <coughs> and practice that is part of Laylat al-Qadr is the recitation of the Qur'an. إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ We have revealed it in the night of Qadr. Qatada رضي الله تعالى عن, He used to finish the Qur'an every three days in Ramadan and in the last ten nights he, he would finish the Qur'an every single night of Ramadan. Every single night of the last ten nights. 
And so we are not on that level in our reading and our recitation and our knowledge of the Qur'an might not be as advanced. But whatever we've been doing with the Qur'an, we should increase it. Push yourself more than we have pushed ourselves the other days of Ramadan. Also, dhikr. And this is especially for women who are unable to pray due to menses. They can engage in dhikr. They can engage in the studies of the Qur'an. They can engage in dua. And so take advantage. Because one cannot physically make salah, doesn't mean that they cannot engage in the worship of Allah. And so engage in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make a time for a word, for dua, for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and, and so we conclude with this. And there are many other acts of ibadat that one can do during the night, rotating be between the recitation of Quran, the salah, dua, dhikr, and so on and so forth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Laylat al-Qadr, to make us among those who stand in it. We ask Allah to accept it from us. We ask Allah to grant us increased iman and to make our intentions this sincerely for him. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make these nights a night of mercy for the ummah by and, to, and by it to grant relief to our oppressed brothers and sisters in Gaza, in Sudan, and in every part of the world. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم وفقنا لليلة القدر وجعلنا من القائمين فيها المؤمنين بك والمحتسبين لأجرك يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة